Magic the Gathering started its life in 1993 as a trading card game that, 27 years later, in 2020, is still going strong in the physical realm. Over those 27 years, though, there's been a large number of Magic the Gathering video games released. These range from direct digital implementations of the physical card game to wildly different genres that merely make use of the characters, lore, and creatures. Many of you have likely heard of some of the more major of these games, like the long-lasting Magic the Gathering Online or upcoming Magic Legends, but there are actually 19 different games that have been released to date. Well, 18 different games and one interactive encyclopedia. Let's dive in and take a semi-chronological look at the history of Magic the Gathering video games. Starting semi-chronologically with the second Magic the Gathering game released, we have, perhaps fittingly, Magic the Gathering for the PC. Published in early 1997 by famed studio Microprose, widely known for their strategy games like Civilization, Master of Orion, and XCOM, this was the first foray into recreating the paper card game in the digital sphere. The game included a deck building interface, a dual interface where players could play against AI of varying difficulty, and video tutorials to teach the game. Blue spells draw their mana from islands and represent the powers of trickery and deception. <laughs> Most widely known from this game, though, was a mode simply called at the time World that was set on the plane of Chandelar. Nowadays, this entire game is simply referred to by many Magic players as Chandelar. In this game mode, players controlled a character walking around an overworld map attempting to stop five wizards, one for each color of magic, from tapping enough settlements to allow them to cast the Spell of Dominion that would let them conquer the plane. The player travels to these various towns, performing simple quests to get rewards in the form of cards for their deck, increased starting life totals, or gems used to activate powerful relics that have effects in the overworld. Also in the overworld are a variety of enemies sent by the five wizards who will chase down the player and, upon catching them, will viciously and without mercy, challenge them to a game of cards. The player will then play a full game of magic against this creature, though, at least for most of the game, with significantly less than the usual 20 life, making the games quite quick. Upon winning, the player will win the card the creature anteed, a choice of some bonus cards or a clue about a dungeon with very powerful cards hidden in them, and the wizard of that color will permanently lose one life from their starting total, weakening them for when the player eventually faces off with them. Speaking of dungeons, they featured a fun reprieve from the constant chase of enemies in the overworld. Dungeons were grid-based corridors filled with enemies that stood sentry waiting for you to challenge them. You could explore various paths, finding dice that provided you random bonuses in your next match, and occasionally scrolls that required you to answer some magic trivia in order to continue on in the dungeon. As a reward, most dungeons featured guarded treasure that provided the player with some of the most powerful cards in the game, including the Power Nine. Notably, the game included a dozen cards that never saw print, excluding an oversized promotional card of Aswin Jaguar that was included in the game box. These cards, called the Astral Set, focused on random effects that could easily be handled by a video game that, at the time, were considered impossible to do in the real world. The game received fairly positive reviews, despite the AI sometimes making extremely bad play decisions, and the Chandelar mode is still enjoyed by players over two decades later, with some intrepid modders even adding more modern cards into the game. The game received two expansions, Spells of the Ancients and Duels of the Planeswalkers, that added more cards to the game and polished the AI interface, as well as adding multiplayer capabilities. In the heart of the Omniverse of Dominia, deep within the nexus of all planes of power, the world of Dominaria exudes the greatest mana. Winding back the clock slightly to January of 1997, we have the actual first Magic the Gathering game ever released, Magic the Gathering Battle Mage. Battle Mage was a real-time strategy game on the PC and PlayStation 1. Published by Acclaim, the game attempted to translate the card game into the real-time strategy genre where stationary players could summon creatures and cast spells to attack their equally stationary opponent on the other side of the map. 
a turn-based campaign mode added in a sort of risk-style map where players could conquer or defend provinces, collect taxes, improve their deck, and eventually defeat their enemies. The game was rather impenetrable as far as its interface and rules were concerned. There was no tutorial and most of the interface buttons were completely unlabeled, sporting only symbols that often had no real connection to what the button did. As you can guess, the game received very negative reviews that focused on the poor interface, explanation of the rules, and the unfair difficulty as the AI players could cast their creatures and send them at the player instantaneously, while the player would have to manually select their card, cast it, select the creature, scroll across the map, and click to attack the AI player. As a result, Battle Mage, unlike Chandelar, has faded into obscurity. Remaining in 1997, the next game is one that very few people will have heard of and even fewer will have ever played. Magic the Gathering Armageddon was an arcade game published by Acclaim. The reason I can almost guarantee you haven't played it is that it's believed that only four of these arcade machines were ever produced and shipped out into the world. One machine was at the Tomorrowland Arcade in Disney World, one at Namco's Wonder Park in San Jose, California, and a third machine at Wizards of the Coast Game Center in Seattle. The fourth? No one knows. To give an idea of just how rare this is, the Video Arcade Preservation Society, a group of people who take arcade game ownership and preservation very seriously, perform a census to track how many arcade machines exist in the world. On a scale of 1 to 100, with 1 being the most rare and 100 being the least rare, Magic the Gathering Armageddon ranks as a 2. The game was a one or two player game using a trackball and three buttons for each player. The gameplay was similar to Battle Mage, with two planeswalkers summoning creatures and casting spells to try to defeat the other. This won't be the last time that we'll see this concept either as we continue through the history of Magic the Gathering video games. With the game being so rare and arcade emulators never successfully supporting the game, little footage exists outside of a couple YouTube videos from people who have owned one of the four arcade cabinets. Moving ahead a couple years to 1999, we have a game in a somewhat loose sense of the word, Magic the Gathering Interactive Encyclopedia. This was a sort of card database and deck building software, however it included one large interactive feature. You could play the decks you built online with other players for free. Now there was no rules enforcement, you had to tap your own creatures, resolve your own spells, everything, but it was free and online and must have been pretty exciting at the time. The encyclopedia section included not only the cards, but also background information on each card, like why it was created and some strategy tips for it. Speaking of strategy tips, there was an entire strategy library of articles about the game and tips on playing, though it was all simply publicly available web pages on Watsi's main website, rather than anything more in-depth or exclusive to this program. At release, the game featured every magic card from Alpha to Mercadian Masks, and regular updates adding new sets that continued until the end of 2002, with the release of a pretty important game we'll talk about soon. Magic the Gathering. Continuing on with the trend of games you've likely never played, but moving ahead to 2001, we have a game called Magic the Gathering. But this time, it was for the Sega Dreamcast, and it was only ever released in Japan, being published and released by Sega themselves. This represents the first time since 1997's same-titled Magic the Gathering that the card game itself was replicated in the digital realm. Similar to that game, this game sees players traveling around to a handful of towns and engaging in duels to increase the power of their decks, however it's done entirely through menus rather than the overworld adventure mode that was Chandelar.
Who is disturbing me? I'm trying to concentrate on my experiment. I don't know who you are, but I have no time to spare for you. Which one of my men should entertain you? Also similar to that previous game, this game included 10 cards that at the time were considered impossible to print in paper due to random rule effects such as Saji's Torrent, which says tap X creatures where X is a random number from 0 to 5. Effects like these, of course, are, albeit rarely, starting to show up in the paper cards 20 years later. Unfortunately, the game was a complete slog to play. It had a very heavy JRPG aesthetic tied to it, which means animations out the wazoo. Every phase change, every card draw, every attack involves a very slow animation, which results in a single game taking far too long to actually complete. The game also featured no network capabilities, making it an entirely single player game. However, the game's DNA will clearly be seen as we move to more recent Magic the Gathering video games. Next up we have a real doozy. As I mentioned, the Magic the Gathering Interactive Encyclopedia had its support ended at the end of 2002, and that was because that summer, Magic the Gathering Online had been released. Magic the Gathering Online, commonly known as MTGO or MODO, an acronym for Magic Online with Digital Objects, as it was known prior to launch, was initially developed and released by Leaping Lizard Software until Wizards of the Coast took over full development the following year. Magic Online was a fairly new concept at the time where users would pay actual money to own objects that existed only within the digital game. Magic Online seeks to replicate the paper magic experience entirely, with players needing to buy booster packs for the same price as physical packs, pay entry fee into tournaments, as well as win prizes that are equally valuable, including invitations to the Magic Pro Tour. Since trading is allowed between players, a secondary market very quickly arose with players using tickets, the currency of the game that players pay $1 to receive one ticket, to buy and sell individual magic cards, with some cards costing as much, if not more, than their paper counterparts. An additional feature tying MTGO to the paper game is set redemption. For a limited time window when a new standard set is released, any player who collects one of every card in the set or one of every foil card in a set can pay a fee, have those cards removed from their MTGO account, and receive a full set of those cards in paper. The game has, at various times, allowed players to play nearly every format and type of magic that has ever officially existed, and even some formats that were never officially sanctioned in paper, like Prismatic, Tribal Wars, and Momir Vig. The program has had many ups and downs involving stability issues, new versions removing features players deemed important, and card interaction bugs. An entire video could be devoted to Magic Online's history as 18 years later in 2020, it's still being actively developed and supported and is currently the only way to play most of Magic's formats involving older cards like Modern, Pioneer, and Commander. However, we still have more games to talk about. The next year, in 2003, we saw the release of Magic the Gathering Battlegrounds. Released by Atari on the PC and Xbox, it adapted Magic the Gathering into a groundbreaking, never-before-seen game style where, that's right, two wizards summoned creatures and cast spells in real time to attack the opposing wizard. I highly doubt you have the skills to win. Your death will give me great pleasure. Duel. This was another crack at what Battle Mage and Armageddon had attempted in the years prior. Battleground, however, had a couple legs up on those previous titles. It had a tutorial and an interface that explained itself, and it also released more than four copies. The game featured a campaign mode where players could play through short storylines and switching between the various colors of magic, with the ultimate goal of defeating Mishra, or players could play one-off duels against AI or another player locally or over a network. 
Each wizard had a book of spells that were accessed through a series of button presses to first open a specific category, like creatures or enchantments, and then to select a specific spell to cast. The creatures would then march towards the opponent, stopping to interact with valid opposing creatures. Abilities like flying would allow creatures to ignore those on the ground, regeneration would allow a creature to respawn when it dies, and so on. The mana required to cast your spells would generate over time, but also would be dropped by defeated creatures that could be picked up to help more quickly fuel your next big spell. Or perhaps to just spam Suntail Hawks into Suntail Hawks. Suntail Hawks! Suntail Hawks! Suntail Hawks! Suntail Hawks! The game received much better reviews than Battle Mage ever did, though still the game wasn't terribly successful or remembered, with GameSpot describing it as a decent game that could have benefited from a better interface. After Magic the Gathering's Battlegrounds, the next Magic game wouldn't be released for almost six years, but it was a big one, and it kickstarted an entire series that we're going to talk about now. Magic the Gathering Duels of the Planeswalkers, developed by Stainless Games, was released in late 2009 for Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and Windows PCs. Duels of the Planeswalkers was the first time that most players in the world could play a digital version of the Magic the Gathering card game with AI and rules enforcements in a single purchasable product since the original Magic the Gathering microprose game in 1997, 12 years prior. Duels of the Planeswalkers was designed to be a sort of arcade version of Magic that was accessible to players while still essentially being the same game that existed in paper. Players were restricted to pre-constructed decks rather than being able to build their own, though they could win new cards to mildly customize those decks. Players received a free mulligan at the start of each game, and various cards the developers felt were too complicated for new players were not included in the game. The game included a campaign mode where players would play increasingly difficult opponents while adding to their pre-constructed deck of choice, a puzzle mode where players would be presented with a board state and asked to figure out how to win that turn, and of course, multiplayer. The game was quite successful, topping the Xbox Live Top 10 play charts for the first two weeks of its release and being one of the most successful Xbox Live digital-only releases. This in turn led to more Duels of the Planeswalker releases starting in 2011. At that point, Duels of the Planeswalkers would become an annual title, releasing new, slightly more polished, slightly more feature-rich games with older cards swapped out for the newer releases. As well, a different alternative play mode was featured in each release, with the previous year's mode being removed. The original game featured Two-Headed Giant, where two players would play against another team of two players, with each pair sharing a life total and their turn, and attacking the other players as a team. 2011's release, confusingly titled Duels of the Planeswalker 2012, featured Arch Enemy, where three players would play against a fourth player who had extremely powerful scheme cards that would add extra abilities as well as a higher life total. Duels of the Planeswalkers 2013 added in Plane Chase, a multiplayer mode where up to four players would play a free-for-all match with a shared plane card that would create an effect for all players and randomly change based on a die roll each turn. 2014 added Sealed Deck, allowing players to open six booster packs and build a deck from the limited pool. And the final annual release, Duels of the Planeswalkers 2015, didn't feature one of these modes but did add custom deck building. The Duels of the Planeswalkers series was very well received in critical and user reviews and brought a lot of new players to the game and returning players back to the game, myself included. Magic Duels, originally titled Magic Duels Origins, released in the summer of 2015, would put an end to the annual nature of this series. It changed the game to free-to-play but requiring players to grind or purchase booster packs to add to their collection to build their decks. It was intended to be continually updated with new sets as they came out and essentially be Magic Online's flashier little cousin. The game featured custom deck building as the 2015 version did, however, with a rarity-based restriction. Each deck could only have one copy of a given mythic, two copies of a given rare, three copies of a given uncommon, and the usual four copies of any given common. 
This led to very different decks than you would see in paper or on Magic Online and had an ardent fan base, some of whom sunk considerable money into the program to collect the cards as each set was released. However, despite the claims that Magic Duels was here to stay, only two years later with the release of Hour of Devastation in 2017, it was announced that support would be discontinued with no new updates or set releases going forward to make way for Magic Arena, which we'll talk about shortly. Before we talk about Arena, however, we need to wind the clock back a bit to early 2011. Magic the Gathering Tactics is, well, a bit of a weird one. Released by Sony Online Entertainment, yes, Star Wars Galaxy's planetside EverQuest, Sony Online Entertainment, Magic the Gathering Tactics took the popular tactics genre and added Magic the Gathering to it. Tactics games, for those unfamiliar, are turn-based strategy games where you move units around a play area, perform attacks and actions that have varying degrees of success, and trying to complete a mission, often simply killing all the opposing units. Final Fantasy Tactics, Fallout Tactics, and XCOM would be some of the most popular of this genre. In this game, two opposing planeswalkers would take turns summoning units, casting spells, and maneuvering on the grid-based battlefield to attempt to gain the upper hand and eventually defeat the enemy planeswalker. Players received starting decks on signing up, with additional cards to customize or build their own decks being available via an in-game auction house, a cash shop, and as rewards available from single-player scenarios. The game was not well received, with many noting a well-designed tactics game being marred by the cash-for-cards economy, a poor interface, and a multitude of bugs and poor programming. At the end of 2011, Sony released a second series of characters and units for the game, and in 2014, shut down the servers. Unfortunately, as the game was not terribly popular, there's not too much information widely available on the game, barring a few gameplay videos on YouTube, and being an entirely server-based game, it's unplayable today. I myself only played the game once for a short while in 2012 before giving up on it, but I'd love to have the ability to go back and experience it now. Sadly, that's the legacy of server-based games. Next up, we're going to hop to a new platform for Magic the Gathering, mobile. Released in December of 2015 was something completely different. Gone was the one-to-one -one adaptation of the paper card game. Gone was two wizards in real time sending creatures to the other side of a battlefield. And in March, a match three game on Android and iOS. Magic the Gathering Puzzle Quest, developed by Hibernum Creations and published by D3Go, took the wildly successful Puzzle Quest game, a game that mixed the bejeweled match three style game with RPG style combat and progression, and gave it a Magic the Gathering twist. In Magic the Gathering Puzzle Quest, players would construct a deck of cards including creatures, spells, enchantments, and other card types, and then battle against the AI or player-built decks which the AI would play. Players would have to match three or more mana crystals to generate mana, with various planeswalkers generating more mana for matches of their colors' crystals. Once enough mana was generated, the top card of your hand would automatically be cast with the effect applied or the creature summoned. The cards, while not exactly the same as their printed version, since the rules of the paper game and the puzzle quest game are quite different, are definitely evocative of their paper equivalent. For example, Dream Trawler in Puzzle Quest is a 5-7 flyer with lifelink that when you draw a card it gets plus one plus one until end of turn, and when it attacks you draw a card. That's one for one, other than the power and toughness, exactly what the paper card does. However, the last paragraph gives Dream Trawler hexproof if you exile an enchantment card from your hand with eight or more mana, which is a phrase that likely only Magic Puzzle Quest players will understand. The game has seen very regular support and updates since its 2015 release, with each new Magic set having a large number of cards created and added to the game. Akoria, Layer of Behemoths, the game's 23rd expansion, was released in May 2020. Puzzle Quest has also been adding older sets with Torment, slated for a June 2020 release. This makes Magic Puzzle Quest currently the longest supported and updated Magic the Gathering game second only to Magic the Gathering Online. Released into closed beta in 2017, open beta in late 2018, and fully released in late 2019 is Magic the Gathering Arena, the latest one-to-one -one adaptation of the paper card game to the digital realm. 
Using an interface refined through the years by Duels of the Planeswalkers, this was the first game developed entirely by Wizards of the Coast without outside assistance. Available currently only for Microsoft Windows, with stated plans for Mac and mobile release later this year, and last year, but hey, who's counting? This game seeks to let players play the exact same game they play at their kitchen table or local game store, but online. Unlike Magic the Gathering Online, where players must pay for everything they do, Magic Arena uses the more modern, freemium style of transaction. The game is free to play, with continued play accruing more in-game currency and cards, but at a very slow rate. To speed that rate up, players can purchase in-game currency for real-world money, as well as purchase booster packs, cosmetics, pets, and entry into tournaments with in-game currency prize payouts. The game features every new standard-based set that is released in paper, in fact, being released a day or two earlier than the paper product. However, unlike Magic the Gathering Online, the game features primarily only the most recent cards and focuses heavily on the standard draft and brawl formats. An arena-specific format, Historic, was introduced to allow players to be able to still use their old cards after the annual standard rotation makes those cards no longer playable in that format. This historic format has seen semi-regular influxes of a handful of cards from Magic's history added to keep the format fresh. The game also represents Wizards of the Coast's first serious foray into the world of esports. The game has been pushed as the premier digital way to play the game and to watch the game, with the biggest tournaments in the game's history, both paper and digital, being hosted on the Arena platform. The game has been plagued with issues of stability, bugs, late features, and a concern about the cost of the program. Unlike Magic the Gathering Online, there is no trading feature for players, meaning that cards are unable to be sold and resold, nor is there any paper redemption, meaning that money spent on Arena can only ever stay in Arena. If Magic Arena can stand the test of time and be the success that Wizards of the Coast hopes will remain to be seen, but it does appear to be the way forward for Magic the Gathering. That doesn't bring us to the end, however. There are still a few more games to talk about, released or soon to be released, since Magic Arena hit the scene, and we'll need to flip back to the mobile platform for the next couple games. Magic Spellslingers, previously known as Valor's Reach, rather than being a one-to-one -one adaptation of Magic the Gathering the trading card game, is a digital collectible card game based on Magic the Gathering. The game makes no attempt at all to be Magic the Gathering, but rather creates an entirely new card game using familiar characters, cards, mechanics, etc. from the original paper game. Released in early 2019 by Seismic Games, the game involves two players playing a real-time card game, though players may find themselves paired with an AI opponent at times. Similar more to Hearthstone than Magic, players will gain a mana crystal each turn allowing them to cast progressively more powerful spells as time goes on. Creatures in combat function much the same as the paper game, with blocks being assigned by the defending player. However, other effects like instants are wildly different, with a player's instant speed spell being cast if a condition is met and the player had excess mana they didn't use the previous turn, somewhat akin to the secret cards from Hearthstone. The game, still marked as being in early access on the Google Play Store, received initially negative responses, primarily from Magic players upset that this was a Magic digital card game that wasn't actually Magic the Gathering, with some of that negativity perhaps being linked to the, as of yet still unreleased, Magic Arena mobile version. On the Google Play Store, however, the game sports a four-star rating. As the game is still in early access, with version 0.1 being recently released, it's hard to say what the future holds for this game and if it will see the long-term support and player base that Magic Puzzle Quest has enjoyed, or if it will fall by the wayside. Another mobile game was released globally in early 2020, though was available a few months earlier in select countries. This game was Magic Mana Strike, developed by Netmarble Games. This game was, once again, similar to Battle Mage, Armageddon, and Battlegrounds, two wizards summoning creatures that would attack each other. However, in the intervening years, a genre of games called Tower Rush games were popularized with Clash Royale perhaps being the most popular. Magic Mana Strike fits solidly into this genre. 
Two players play in real time with a deck of cards that represent creatures, spells, and buildings. They cast these cards to attempt to destroy the opposing player's main tower or, failing that, destroy more of their secondary towers than their opponent before the game's time limit is up. Mana is generated quickly in real time and creatures and buildings can only be summoned on your half of the battlefield. As a magic twist on the genre, each player receives a three times per game, plus one bonus use in the final minute, Planeswalker card, where they can summon their Planeswalker to the battlefield. While often somewhat weak by themselves, they infer huge bonuses to the creatures around them and, once summoned, have a one-time use spell to provide even further bonuses. The game is notable for having a couple alternate Planeswalker skins that players can purchase that show characters in ways we've never seen them before, such as Nahiri in much more warrior-esque garb, and of course Gideon as an Aetherworks cyborg. I've returned again. There will be no failure this time. It's been clarified that these should not be taken as canonical representations of the Planeswalkers. The game has received somewhat regular updates, with plenty of new planeswalkers and cards being added, and like Spellslingers, it will remain to be seen if it has lasting power or not. Finally, we reach the end, for now anyways, with one last game. This game hasn't been released or even gone into closed alpha yet, so details are still a bit sparse with plenty of room for things to change before launch. That game is Magic Legends, an upcoming game by Cryptic Studios and Perfect World Entertainment. Magic Legends is an action RPG that represents the first attempt at a major non-card game release on PC and consoles based on the Magic the Gathering IP since Magic the Gathering Battlegrounds in 2003, with Magic Legends arguably having a far greater level of prestige and expectation than Battlegrounds ever did. Magic Legends, based on initial footage and development diaries, appears to be somewhat similar to Diablo or Path of Exile, an action RPG where players can play single player or with friends killing creatures and getting loot. However, the game adds a magic twist by having you create a deck of cards. These cards represent your available attacks, skills, summons, and so forth, and you only have four at a time available for use. When you use one, it gets replaced with the next card in your deck. As such, you have to be perhaps a bit more careful with your attack plans, as the attack you may want to use may not currently be in your hand, perhaps shifting in and out of offense and defense, and saving cards to pull off more powerful combos when you finally draw that right skill. The game will feature various classes to play, such as the Geomancer or Mind Mage, each with different playstyles and card selections, and, while players will be playing their own characters, known characters from the Magic Multiverse are expected to make appearances along with very familiar creatures, spells, and locations. More information is being released each week, with the closed alpha starting very soon, though unfortunately under an NDA, so it may be a while until we're able to watch this game being played by various creators, but when I'm able to. You best bet you'll find content for Magic Legends right here on this channel. So there we have the very long and winding road of Magic the Gathering's history with video game adaptations, interpretations, and spin-offs. Do you have any fond memories of some of the older games here? Are you one of the few who have laid your hands on the Magic the Gathering Armageddon arcade game, or are you as excited as I am about Magic Legends? Let me know in the comments below. If you have enjoyed this video, I'd be very appreciative if you liked, shared, and subscribed. And hey, if you really enjoyed it and you would like to see more, consider checking me out on Patreon or Twitch. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you all next time.